Hey, superstars, it's your best friend, Scott. It is time for our August recap. I didn't really do a July recap because of the national. And as I'm saying that, I realized I didn't need to tell you that I'm a slacker because everybody already knows that, but whatever. Hey, I got a VR for the Drew. I've got crazy amount of care packages and gifts, and I've got some pretty cool pickups. So less talk, more rock. Let's do this. My best friend, The Drew, is celebrating his upcoming 100th video, and all of them are excellent, by the way. And he wants to hear about our favorite baseball books. Now, everybody mentions the excellent glory of their times because it's excellent. And uh, I tend to read a bunch of books about Cleveland, no surprise there. So I'll try to pick out some books that might appease more than just Cleveland fans. The Chalmers race is pretty fascinating. It's about the 1910 batting race between Ty Cobb and Nap Lajoie and the controversy surrounding that. And then moving on to 1920, the pitch that killed is fantastic. This one is about Carl Mays and Ray Chapman. In 1920, Mays beamed Chapman with a pitch that killed him, and I'm not giving this book enough justice, but it is one of my absolute favorites. So getting over that and amidst the fallout of the 1919 Black Sox scandal, the Indians won the 1920 World Series. The best they could be chronicles that 1920 season, and that is also worth a read. Another great read is Our Team, like absolutely freaking stellar, fantastic, and all those things. This one is about the 1948 season, and Bob Feller, Bill Veck, Larry Doby, and Satchel Paige, and how these four very different men came together to bring a World Series to Cleveland. But um, it's also about integration in baseball and how that goes beyond Jackie. I'm currently really enjoying Bill Veck's autobiography, Veck as in Wreck, which I left in the car, so just pretend I'm showing it to you now. It's a fascinating look at marketing in baseball. And after that, I'm looking forward to reading Amazing Baseball Heroes, recommended by Liam, Junior Baseball Fanatic 12, who's got a giveaway associated with this book going on right now, too. And honestly, I made this whole VR up. The Drew's not really doing this. I just wanted to see who was paying attention. And I think it would be really funny, though, if a bunch of people made VRs for a contest that wasn't really happening. So I love the idea of random shout outs for no reason other than I dig a channel. So I wanted to give a shout out to RJ and Jake at Father Son Vintage Cards. I mean, they are Yankee fans, but I'll give them a pass. They, they are exactly what their name says, a father and a son enjoying vintage cards. They go to a lot of shows, show off great cards and lots of SGC reveals. And Jake knows more about vintage cards than I do. Great collection, really fun videos, and they're killing it. Almost 700 subs in five months, and they don't need a shout out, but I'm happy to give them one. So keep up the good work, guys. This is from my besties Snake and Rusty Nuts over at COG Sports Cards, and I apparently won a contest I had no idea about. I'm just that awesome, or that much of a bad friend, because I didn't know. Anyway, here's an HGA 9 Roger Clemens rookie. Pretty sharp looking card. But if I'm being honest, I've since regifted this to someone who will appreciate it more than I would. That either makes me a good person for spreading the love, or a bad person for not treasuring the sweet card they sent. Oh, I'm so torn, but I appreciate you guys. This one did end up in the right hands, so thanks fellas. Here is a package from my best friend Danny at Mets Rule. Let's see. Went to induction weekend and had a blast. Lucky. Saw this and so had to pick it up and send it to my bestie. Ah, your best pal Danny. Let's see what Danny found for me. Oh, Alvaro, you sexy beast. Awesome. Autographed 8x10. Thanks, Danny. No, I did not have this one. Love it, buddy. Okay, so this is actually a TTM request to me from my bestie Mike, the vintage composer. I offered to send anyone some of my custom cards, and quite a few people sent me self-addressed stamped envelopes for those, which I appreciate. This says, at your leisure, I would be honored to add more of your artwork cards to my collection. I need that, Maddie. Enjoy these for now, Mike. Mike, you did not have to send me anything, you goofball, but I'm glad you did. Let's see what you sent. There's Reggie and that 93 team card. I love that card. There's Tommy. 73 Rick Auerbach. Oh, I remember him showing off this card with the cartoon saying Rick's nickname is Reindeer. That's awesome. Carlos, Chris James, Greg Swindell. Only that's not Swindell. That's Tim Costo. And here's some Orioles legends. Albert Bell, Sam Horn, and Jose Mesa. These are fun, Mike. Thanks, dude. Here's another TTM request from a TTM legend himself and my best friend Eddie from Eddie's Cardboard Chaos. Dear Mr. Studios, so formal. I would love a copy of the cool cards you were giving out to your best friends at the show. Thank you in advance, Eddie. You crack me up, buddy. Here's Jose One Punch Ramirez. That's awesome. 
and a gold Gabriel Arias rookie. He has struggled at the plate, but he's starting to show some promise. I love it. And here's Eddie's sweet Ricky custom. And yep, he signed it even better. Thanks, Eddie. These are great. And yet another TTM request. The offer still stands, by the way, but you guys really don't have to send me any gifts. This one is from my best friend, Goodward G. Goodington. Thank you for some more of your art. It truly means a lot. Here are a couple things for you too. Your bestie, Goody. And Goody sent over a Prism Shane Bieber and Jose Ramirez and a classic minor league Omar Ramirez. That's neat. Thanks so much, Goody. These are awesome sauce. This one's from my bestie, Mr. Fisherbike. Mr. Scott, please enjoy the man picks. I saw the patch and got it for you. Your best pal, Jason. There's some kind of finest Manny. That is gorgeous. Then a pink Cody Allen, Topps Chrome Prism Boudreau. I love that. And a crazy select Franimal. And the Mr. Wahoo patch there. Those cards are so cool, Jason. Thanks, buddy. You rock. I was a guest on my best friend Big Scott's live stream a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about YouTuber customs and the National and stuff, and I let him know that I did not get one of his customs, which was weird because we ran into each other many times that week, but Scott made it up to me by sending me the rare Death Star short print. That's no moon. Thanks, Scott. I'm happy to have it. Okay, this one's for my best friend Caleb from Caleb's Cards, TTM Autographs, and more. It says, an Alvaro card I found and thought you might like. Your bestie, Caleb. Well, you thought right, Caleb. Hey, nice. I don't see this one too often. It's a 97 Pacific collection. That is a sharp looking card. Thanks, Caleb. You all know I've got my weird little bromance with my best friend Don, and I think we're embarrassed that we like each other so much, so we make fun of each other in public just to throw you off the scent, and I've said too much already. Anyway, we planned a little bro date at an Akron Rubber Ducks game, and he comes to pick me up in this fancy pants convertible, so it was like fear and loathing in Akron, Ohio. Suddenly, there was a terrible roar all around us, and the sky was full of what looked like huge bats, all swooping and screeching and diving around the car. And he came with gifts. This first one is a Wheaties ad he won from Cracker Jack. The prize package was this ad and a Stan Musial ad, and we agreed that if either of us won, I'd get the Bob Lemon, and he'd get the Musial ad. And wouldn't you know it, Don won. I think the whole thing was rigged somehow, but I'm not complaining. This is awesome. Bob says, those whole wheat flakes taste swell and give you real nourishment. Don also gave me this fun photo of Bob Hope in an Indian's uniform. He was part owner of the team at one point, and Bing Crosby looking a little angry at having to wear a Pirates uniform, but Bing was part owner of the Pirates too. And then this weird Bob Feller card I didn't have, and a 52 Tops Bob Lemon. I've been looking at this card for a while, and I think it's a handsome card. Uh, Don bought this for himself, and he didn't like the staining up there, but uh, it's perfect for my binder. I love it. I'd say thank you, Don, but he doesn't watch my videos. So if any of you guys see him out there, let him know I said thank you. Speaking of Cracker Jack cards, here's a very fun Darth Vader package from my best buddy Jack himself. He reached out and asked if I was interested in buying some old Bob Feller magazines. And of course I'm interested in buying some old Bob Feller magazines. This one is Complete Baseball, very rad. And then a sport magazine from April 1951, super cool. And Jack even threw in this Wheaties ad. New Wheaties are better than ever. That's awesome. Thanks, Jack. These are going to be fun to read. This little Helmar cigarette box was from an antique shop I visit a lot. I thought it was cool and it was like nine bucks, so I couldn't pass that up. My favorite flea market hosts a nice monthly card show, so I decided to give it a go in August. I could not help but buy this signed Alvaro 8x10. Look at that cutie pie. But I spent more than I wanted to because I found more picture packs. This uh, feller is from a 1949 All-Star set. I could not ID these three, but uh, most of the 1948 Indians picture pack was there. Boudreaux, feller. Joe Gordon, there's Larry Doby, Hank Greenberg, there's Bob Lemon, and Al Lopez. I'll have to see if I can finish this set. I'm missing seven, including the satchel and the Bill Vec. But I have a similar satchel from a different pack, but I don't know how picky I want to be about that. Um, these are 1949 picture packs, which I already had, but I bundled these all together. There's the uh, 1949 Doby. I just love these things, and I got them for a steal because the dealer said he's had them for a while and he couldn't sell them. Oversized stuff is awesome. Here are my eBay pickups. Part of me wants to collect a bunch of different tobacco cards and part of me doesn't want to go down that rabbit hole, but they're so cheap sometimes. Here are some player's cigarette deer heads that spoke to me. No reindeer though. 
And here are caricatures of some famous fancy British people. I was employed as a caricature artist way back when, and I thought these were really neat. And the only one I'd ever heard of is Rudyard Kipling, who wrote The Jungle Book. I was inspired by my best buddy Dom at Staven Sports Cards to pick up this Frank Robinson Jet magazine. Dom picked up one of these at the National, and he was excited to share it with me because he thought I'd like it. And he was right, and I ended up buying one for myself. And I've been after a 1948 Cleveland Indians World Series Champions exhibit card for a little while. And this one popped up in my save search. This is the 1980 reprint, but it is signed by Bob Feller, Lou Boudreaux, Bob Lemon, and Ken Keltner. And it was dirt cheap, so I was happy to grab that. I've been working on my autographed Al Rosen run. I picked up a nice 1953 Bowman. I just love that card, and I just need three more to finish that project. For my Guardian's autograph project, I picked up recent acquisitions Cole Calhoun, Ramon Laureano, and Thor, who was recently DFA'd. Wah, wah. I'm trying my best to keep up, but I'm still only at 85% of everybody who's ever played in a Guardian's uniform. So that's it for now. Thanks again to all my best friends, Snake and Rusty Nuts, Danny at Mets Rule, The Vintage Composer, Eddie's Cardboard Chaos, Goody G, Mr. Fisherbike, Big Scott, Caleb, Donnie, Cracker Jack, go check out The Drew, and Jake and RJ at Father Son Vintage Cards. And thank you guys and gals so much for watching. We'll see you real soon.